Gun rights proponents often say that the reason there are so many gun-related deaths in America has nothing to do with the guns, it has to do with the crime. It is a, it is a violent, crime-ridden country, and so people need to defend themselves with guns. Don't talk about the guns, don't take away the guns, that's what they say. Unfortunately for them, the scientific method exists, and so we're going to take a look at the data here. Now, first of all, here is an interesting chart put together uh, by Vox that shows the number of homicides by firearm per one million people. Uh, so yes, very high, obviously, to demonstrate the severity of the problem. The next closest is something like four times lower. Before we get into this, notice the top left of the chart John is showing us. It says homicides by firearms. Why homicides by firearms and not just the plain old homicide rate? Well, this is the statistical game that those in favor of gun control play in order to distract from the main issue. The main issue is whether homicides are higher or lower irrespective of how they were committed. A dead person does not care whether he was shot or stabbed. This is also why Jenk Uger waffles and then corrects himself later on in the video. Their death rate, uh, the uh, uh, homicide by firearm rate went down. In this video, I will only use the basic homicide rate. One of the points people in favor of gun rights often make is that it is the person and not the gun who commits the crime. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. You can't ban the iron rods. The guns, the iron rods, Pierce didn't do it. Moreover, they argue that in the absence of guns, criminals will find other means to murder just the same. Therefore, it is an evasion of the issue to parse out the homicide by firearm rate from the regular homicide rate. Before looking at the world as a whole, let's narrow our focus and look only at the United States. According to the theory that more guns leads to more homicide, we should expect that the states with the most guns should have the highest murder rates and the states with the least guns should have the lowest murder rates. The opposite is true. This chart shows the top 10 states with the lowest levels of gun ownership. The District of Columbia, also called Washington DC, has the lowest gun ownership rate in the country but the highest murder rate in the country by a wide margin. The next state with the highest homicide rate is Louisiana at 9.6 per 100,000, which is less than half of the rate in Washington, despite having 12 times the rate of gun ownership. New Jersey, New York, California, and Maryland are also quite high. There is simply no way to look at this table and conclude that states with less guns have less homicide. Unfortunately for them, the scientific method exists Turning to states with high rates of gun ownership, this chart shows us that many of the states with the highest rates of gun ownership have the lowest murder rates in the country. Wyoming, the state with the highest rate of gun ownership, is the fourth safest state in the country in terms of homicide. Montana, South Dakota, Idaho, and North Dakota also have very low murder rates. As an average, it is the states with the most guns that have the least murder, not the other way around. In fact, the murder rate in many states with high gun ownership are very similar to the murder rates in those countries that those in favor of gun control claim we should emulate. Wyoming has the highest rate of gun ownership in the United States and a homicide rate of 1.4 per 100,000. Not only does Wyoming have one of the lowest homicide rates in the country, but it also has a homicide rate that is lower than Finland, a country with about a third the number of guns per capita as the United States and one of the safest countries in the world. On the other hand, Washington DC has the lowest rate of gun ownership in the United States and a homicide rate of 21.8 per 100,000. Not only does Washington have the highest homicide rate in the country, it also has a homicide rate that is greater than Nigeria, yet no one is advocating that we emulate the government policies of Nigeria to lower the homicide rate in Washington. Now let's look at the world as a whole. Vox and the Young Turks have rightly pointed out that the United States has a higher homicide rate than Western European countries with strict gun control legislation. However, The Economist Thomas Sowell points out in Intellectuals in Society that any serious discussion of gun control policy would warrant this follow-up question. Now that we know there are some countries with strict gun control laws and lower murder rates than the United States, are there countries with strict gun control laws and higher murder rates than the United States? The answer is yes. Russia and Brazil have tougher gun control laws than the United States, but much higher murder rates. Moreover, gun ownership rates in Mexico are a fraction of what they are in the United States, but Mexico's murder rate is more than double that in the United States. 
Yet no one is advocating that Russia, Brazil, and Mexico adopt the American policy on gun control in order to lower their homicide rates. It is just as arbitrary to compare the United States to Western European countries with some of the highest standards of living in the world and radically different cultures and histories and claim that the United States should adopt their gun control policies to reduce homicide as it is to compare Russia, Brazil, and Mexico with comparatively low standards of living and equally different cultures and histories to the United States and claim that they should adopt the gun control policies of the United States in order to reduce their homicide rates. It's, it's, pro it's fact. It's fact. And, and in these studies, you know what it, it turns out? Australia, for example, when they took the guns away, right? That's what Mark Hamill was talking about. It became harder to kill people. Their suicide rate went down. Their death rate, uh, the uh, uh, homicide by firearm rate went down. If our rates went down at the same level as Australia's rates went down after they did reasonable gun control, we would have saved, uh, in 2013, over 16,000 lives. So in September 11th, we lost about 3,000 people. More than five times that amount we lose every single year, not based on the number of people who commit suicide and, and the, the firearm homicides, okay? Just the difference between what our rate is and what Australia's rate is after they did the gun control. Just on that, if we pass that reasonable law, over 16,000 people would be alive today. And that's every year, 16,000 year after year after year after year because there's guns everywhere when someone's thinking of committing suicide in Australia do are they do they have a people problem they do people consider doing suicide they slit their wrists that doesn't work as well they take pills that doesn't work as well so they don't die here in America they're like oh here's a gun boom that works you're dead okay on, on firearm suicides alone we'd save over 12,000 lives think about that I'm not even talking about homicides we're not talking about the two-year-old that shot the nine-month-old because there was a gun lying around just on suicide. What Jenk is saying is that more guns means more suicide. The natural follow-up to Jenk's theory is to look at the countries with the highest suicide rates and see if there is any connection between the rate of suicide and guns per capita. The country with the highest suicide rate in the world is Guyana. It has 14.6 guns per 100 residents. That's not a small amount of guns but it's about one-sixth of what the United States has. The country with the second highest suicide rate is South Korea. It has 1.1 guns per 100 residents. It has one of the lowest gun ownership rates in the world. Korea, literally meaning the land of the morning calm, holds a record that has earned it the nickname Republic of Suicide. Every day, nearly 50 Koreans end their own lives. Senior citizens account for the majority. The United States has 80 times as many guns as South Korea, but less than half the number of suicides. In South Korea, people are likely to kill themselves by jumping off a bridge or ingesting pesticides or other poisons. Since the high-profile suicide of a Korean business leader from the Mapo Bridge, jumping into the river has become something of a trend. To tackle this spate of tragedies, some bridges are now equipped with surprising anti-suicide measures, such as photos of smiling, happy families, and reassuring messages. It doesn't work as well, so they don't die. In the waters of the River Han, people survive an average of four minutes. It doesn't work as well, so they don't die. This morning, he's doing the rounds in the province of Guando, where the official suicide rate is the highest in the country at 500 a year. It doesn't work as well, so they don't die. The swallowing of toxic substances, it's all too common in the countryside. It's, it's, pro it's fact, it's fact. 
Well, rates of property of common property crimes in the U.S. are comparable to those reported in many other Western industrial nations, but rates of lethal violence in the U.S. are much higher. Violence is not a crime problem. This is coming from Franklin Zimring and Gordon Hawkins, who put together uh, a number of years ago an analysis of the connection between crime and guns. What does that mean, violence is not a crime problem? I don't understand that. Well, we're going we're gonna to show you. Oh, thanks. That it's not directly related. It's not a necessary consequence of the level of crime that we have. Uh, now, the lowest death rate country, England, has a crime rate just over average, actually. The next lowest violence nation is Japan, which has the lowest crime rate. The third lowest death rate country is the Netherlands in the highest crime rate group. So this is showing that you don't have this correlation between more crime necessarily resulting in more deaths from guns. A country like the Netherlands has very few deaths, very high crime. John is pointing out that there isn't necessarily a causal connection between crime and homicide. That is, countries with high crime do not necessarily have high rates of homicide. The key example is England, which has a lot of crime, but not a lot of homicide, presumably because of the gun control laws that were implemented in the late 90s. The natural follow-up to this claim is to look at the homicide rate in England before and after gun control was implemented. In this chart, we can see that the homicide rate in England was already quite low before gun control was implemented. After gun control was implemented, the homicide rate doubled in a period of about five years, only to return to its previous rate by 2010. Gun control either had no effect or made things worse. The Young Turks and Vox seem to have no interest in explaining how this trend is an argument in favor of gun control. Moreover, what John does not consider is the possible connection between gun control in England and the high levels of crime. It is often said by gun rights advocates that disarming the public will result in more crime because criminals will be able to take advantage of a public who are unable to protect themselves. Somehow, the Young Turks are oblivious to or have evaded this argument. In an Orwellian moment, John claims that criminals in England have not run roughshod over the public immediately after other TYT panelists have acknowledged the high levels of crime in England. And uh, so the, the thing that I, that I love out of this is, of course, you look at this and then you think, well, they always say here, you can't make guns harder to get or illegal because that only hurts the law-abiding people. The criminals are always going to get guns and then they're going to run roughshod off the now disarmed public. So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? Have any of these people ever seen a Guy Ritchie movie? Like those arguing against it or Peaky Blinders? Like all they do is commit crimes in England. The criminals are always going to get guns and then they're going to run roughshod off the now disarmed public. So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? Well, they actually do, they have a higher crime rate in London than they do in New York. So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? I used to be a stick up kid. Basically, I used to rob drug dealers, you know, um, all sorts, all sorts of robberies. I mean, banks, you know, travel agents and whatnot. So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? Having respect means that no one can touch you. No yeah, can touch you. basically, yeah. And if you have to get that by beating up man every day or stabbing someone every day, it's gonna have to be done, in it? So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? They might find out that, raw, maybe the only way to make money is to run up in somebody's house with a gun and stick it in their face, and if they've got money in their house, take it all. Do you know what I mean? So then why the fuck doesn't that happen in all of these countries? Everybody wants what everybody else has got, and the only way to get it is to either take out the other person or make the person scared enough to give it to you. In London, if there's nobody, the police don't have guns, the homeowners don't have guns, why don't the criminals get the fucking guns that you say they're inevitably going to get? This is showing that they don't actually do that. Guns don't magically appear if you make them difficult to get. Nowadays, it's all about guns and knives. And that's escalated over the years. Yeah. Guns don't magically appear if you make them difficult to get. I don't even understand it myself, do you get what I'm saying? Because I've seen kids the age of 10 years carrying Mac-10s. 10 year olds? Yeah. Carrying a sub machine gun? Yeah. Guns don't magically appear if you make them difficult to get. Do you see what I'm saying? I can go around the corner and buy a gun now, if I really wanted to. I can go around the corner right now and buy a gun. It's that easy. What, a pistol? I can buy a pistol, yeah. I can buy a Mac-10 if Mac I wanted to, yeah. Guns don't magically appear if you make them difficult to get. So what kind of guns are available? Handguns, 4.5s, magnums, long nose, snub nose, whatever. 
and we'll we'll get them. And they're easy to get. They're easy to get. The point of this video is not to say that the world would be a safer place if there were more guns. Instead, the point is that there is no one-to-one -one connection between rates of homicide and gun ownership. Depending on the countries you choose to compare, an argument can easily be made in favor of gun control or gun rights. It is very possible that the direction of causality may be the opposite of what people assume. It is often observed that many Western European countries are peaceful and also have gun control. However, it also happens to be true in England and elsewhere across Western Europe that many of these countries were peaceful prior to the implementation of gun control. This means that rather than gun control being the cause of peace, peace was the cause of gun control. Peaceful societies with little affection or perceived need for guns are more likely to implement laws that limit the use of guns or ban them altogether. This point recalls the words of Winston Churchill, who said, when you have peace, you will have disarmament. Churchill was talking about the military, but the same could just as well be said about the right to bear arms. For as long as there have been groups, there have been group differences. It is no surprise that different countries with radically different cultures, histories, and geographies would have different homicide rates. They were different before the invention of the gun, and they continue to be different after the invention of the gun. Whatever the merits or demerits of gun control, International comparisons are not an adequate tool to forecast the results in the United States. Even within the United States, a state-by-state -state comparison reveals the opposite trend of what gun control advocates are looking for. The reason is that cultural differences between states are so great that the comparison is made null and void. If the differences between states in one country are so great to make the comparison pointless, then it is even less likely that an international comparison would give any relevant information. The cultural theory of violence explains the difference in homicide rates between states with high gun ownership and states with low gun ownership. Many of the least violent places in the United States, despite having high rates of gun ownership, are located in the north. In contrast, many of the most violent places are located in the south, even when they have less guns. This is because the northern and southern United States have radically different cultures. In Better Angels of Our Nature, Steven Pinker describes the American self as a culture of honor. In a culture of honor, individuals have a greater willingness to resort to violence in order to save face and show strength. Also in Better Angels of Our Nature, Steven Pinker notes that when the state is absent, such as in the Wild West, or when you deal in a kind of business where you can't rely on the state to settle disputes, such as in the drug trade, then you have to defend yourself with violence or the credible threat of violence. Good legal system, you put that on the list as Good well? Good legal system, absolutely. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, the alternative is the, the so Sopranos or the Corleones or the American <laughs> Wild West, mm. where if, uh, if either the state is absent, uh, as in the cliche of the cowboy movies, that the nearest sheriff is 200 miles away, and so you have to defend yourself with your six-shooter, or if you deal in a kind of business where you can't press a lawsuit uh, to defend your interests. If you think you've been cheated in a drug deal, you can't really hire a lawyer. Uh, if you think you've been threatened by a, another drug lord, you can't dial 911 and bring in the cops, and so you have to defend yourself with uh, violence or the credible threat of violence. And so even as long as the criminal justice system is not intimidated by the mafia, the mafia kingpins and has at least some degree of autonomy, then it means that rates of violence will be lower. A lesson to take from this video is that societies are not blank slates where you can simply impose X policy and expect to get X result. It would be comforting to think that this were the case. If it were true, then the solution to our problems would be as simple as determining the correct policy and implementing it. But the weight of history is heavy. It cannot always be easily lifted by tinkering with the laws. This view of the world, that problems can be easily solved by direct government action, is described by Thomas Sowell as the vision of the anointed. Opposing social visions, intellectuals in society, quote, at the heart of the social vision prevalent among contemporary intellectuals is the belief that there are problems and solutions, yeah. close quote. Explain that. Well, the, the people with the vision of the anointed, as I call it, believe there are solutions and that intellectuals have the inside track in providing those solutions. 
We know more than most people. That's right. Therefore, we are in a position to survey society, see specific problems, and propose solutions. And given this view of the world, there is little incentive to honestly check the data if there is a chance that it will come into conflict with the vision. And yet you argue here that the least interested in actual empirical tests, testing hypothesis, testing ideas against reality, mm. are intellectuals. Why? Because there, there are many talents. They have a huge ego stake in, in, in a given set of conclusions. But, 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 but if you believe in social justice and saving the environment, you know, uh, I mean, you are really something. And so they, the people with that viewpoint have a huge ego state. They, they, and, and empirical evidence is like gambling all of that on, on, on a roll of the dice. Mm -hmm.